Hello there, Tracy Williams here. I have a question for you. Do you want more money? Our relationship with money and our relationship with wealth has everything to do with how much of it we have. This is true regardless of whether you have plenty of money yet you still desire greater wealth or if you have very little and you need more in order to survive. The interesting thing is, is that we very often may not even be aware of how seemingly innocu innocuous thoughts and language, words that we speak, are blocking greater level of financial abundance and flow in our life. Thought patterns, conversation patterns, and habits dealing with money that are familiar and common and that are really common amongst those that we hang out with, common amongst the, the kind of conversations we have in our family, past and present may go unnoticed. We may not even realize that they are impacting the flow of financial wealth because, well, they're habits. They're normal to us. They don't seem to have any ill effect. I'm really grateful that my path in life does and has taken me to hang out with people of all levels of education and people of all levels of wealth and success and I've noticed a few things along the way. The other night, uh, last weekend actually, I was at a gathering with some people that I'm around quite often. And I happen to know, for the most part, that th these individuals are, they're happy, uh, you know, they do fine, and yet they would really love a greater level of wealth. And I was paying attention to the conversation and I noticed that much of the conversation was qualified by money. Here's what I mean. One guy modestly and proudly shared that his son had produced a new um, album. He's, uh, he pl plays music and sings. And all of his albums up until now have been amateur, uh, beautiful recordings, but amateur. And this time he went full out and had a professionally produced album. So as this man was describing this, after he told us about this, he went on to say how many tens of thousands of dollars it cost to produce this particular album. Now another person was sharing a desire that he has, a really burning desire that he had, but he followed it with, but I don't have the kind of wealth that's needed to do, blah, blah, blah. Now in contrast, about a month ago I was amongst a group of people who clearly have a lot, a great deal of financial freedom in their life that they've created for themselves. And I noticed that neither money, how much something cost, or Anything about money was even mentioned as part of the conversation, as part of the stories that they were sharing, a part of the visions and the dreams that they were talking about. They didn't qualify what they had done or what they desired doing with the investment required to do so. It wasn't even part of the conversation. Now you might say that that's because they don't have, you know, because they've got plenty of it. Maybe it is, but which comes first, the chicken or the egg? So let me be clear. I am not saying that people who desire more wealth have money relationship issues and that people that have lots of money don't have relationship, money relationship issues. That's absolutely not the case. And that's a topic for another day because it's a pretty extensive one. But what I am saying is that if we desire more wealth, regardless of how much we have or don't have, regardless of all the other issues we may have around money, stress or what have you, if we desire more wealth, we must start noticing our habits, noticing our patterns, notice the words that we share, the stories that we tell, beyond what's apparent, beyond what is apparently beneficial or damaging with our words and, and what, we, what we say and share. We have to take a look at a deeper level at what indicates a sense of lack or what indicates a sense of not, not enough. Becoming aware of our relationship with money and then, and then shifting the beliefs that are blocking a greater flow of money at whatever level you desire wealth is the key to making that change. So this week, I invite you to notice how often your thoughts and your words involve money. Get really curious about what added value those thoughts or those comments have to the story or the thought press process or the conversation that you're having. Is it important? Does it add value? Does what I say add value? Or is it your stuff about money? You're, you're being impressed with it. You're being 
wow, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much that cost. Where you're qualifying what it is that you're saying with money. Notice when you're qualifying around money. Thoughts that you think and words that you speak that have a sense of lack or a feeling that indicate the value of what it is, the thing that you're talking about or the experience that you're talking about. Or if, again, if you're impressed by either in a positive way, wow, that's so cool, or oh my gosh, kind of an impression. You're giving power to money. You're giving money power over you. And it might be holding you back from a greater flow of money in your life. So we must start halting the thoughts and leaving out the comments about how much. Start practicing that. When you have the, when you, when you have the, the, uh, the thought or you start to say the words or you've said them, be aware. And as we become more aware of what it is that we're saying and what it is that we're doing, we then can start to shift that. So I invite you this week to halt those thoughts, to leave out those comments about how much. Ultimately, this will break the spell the fa of, of false power that you've given money. And when you no longer hold the belief that money is the qualifier for what you can or can't do, for what you have or don't have, for what you can be or can't be, you will allow greater flow of financial abundance in your life.